Mochiago Krinyuninog. Welcome to this Krinyuninog workshop. Uh, my name is Owen Gill and I work at Waterford Institute of Technology. I'm an engineer and I work in a centre called Calmast and our job is to tell the world about the importance of science, technology, engineering and maths. So today we're going to do an engineering challenge with you and I'm going to do another uh, workshop later on in the week and my colleagues Cordula Weiss and Sheila Donegan are also doing workshops. So we hope you're enjoying the uh, Krinyuninog Festival and thank you to the organisers for managing to keep it going in these difficult times. So we're delighted with that and we're delighted to be with you. So today we're going to do an engineering challenge. So we're going to look at structures. That's going to be our engineering challenge to build some structures. And we're going to make them using things you might find in a house. So paper, obviously, um, and uh, this sellotape, obviously. And I'm also going to show you how to use straws or cocktail sticks or maybe skewers and other things to make uh, to make structures and to learn a lot about how buildings work. But first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about the materials and the types of buildings we can build. So in engineering, it's really important for us to know how other people have done things. So as engineers learn from other engineers and over history, they learned how to build bigger and better things. Um, so let's look at how our ancestors built things. Well, here's um, Wexford Heritage Park and you can see this building. It's made of thatch, which is probably straw or reeds and wood. And another building nearby is shows use of stone and they also use mud. So they used uh, what was available in their own environment and they could build really big things in their ancient ancestors. Here's the Great Pyramid uh, in uh, Egypt and that's four and a half thousand years old. But we don't have to go to Egypt and we can go back a little further here. This is Newgrange up in County Mead near Drogheda and it's 5,000 years old. And those, our ancient ancestors must have known a lot about maths and engineering to be able to build that. So what can we build from? Well, we can build from wood, mud, stone, concrete, steel. That's what we've seen there. But what about paper? Paper, surely that's not strong enough. Well, not only paper, but cocktail sticks, marshmallows, wine gum, spaghetti. We can build from all of these and we're going to have a bit of fun now looking at building structures from these. It's not just how strong the material is, it's how we use it. And that can be shown using our ruler here. When we have the ruler uh, flat, bends very easily. But if we turn it up like this, to bend it down, it all of a sudden becomes much harder. So it's not just the strength of the material itself, but it's how we use the pieces made of that material. And that's going to be important in a few minutes. So remember this. So our engineering challenge is to build a bridge. That's our first challenge. So let's look at some bridges first and see uh, how they're built. This is Carrigareed Rope Bridge up in County Antrim, and that goes 20 meters across to an island and it's about 30 meters above the sea that's made of rope and uh, wood. And uh, here's a typical masonry bridge, a wood, uh, stone bridge, and this is across the Grand Canal. Here's a bridge in across the Severn in England. This is the world's first iron bridge. And once steel was used, iron and then steel was used for bridges, it uh, really extended how far bridges could go. And that's the first modern suspension bridge in the world in Wales. Now, the, long, the longest bridge in Ireland is almost a kilometre long and it's south of New Ross and it crosses the Barrow. And that was opened uh, just over a year ago. And uh, that was amazing uh, project. Look at this. This is how it started and this is how it finished. So how would you like to work on a project like that and build Ireland's longest bridge. So a bridge like the bridge at New Ross is very complicated and it's actually made of concrete and steel. 
concrete wouldn't be strong enough on its own uh, to do the job so we use a lot of steel uh, in it and engineers have to design the whole thing and they use uh, computer systems like this uh, in the design and uh, to check if everything is going to work out well before they build it. Now this is showing now this is all the steel that will be inside uh, encased in the concrete. It's covered in concrete and that's what gives uh, all the strength to the bridge. And you can see it's very complicated. So engineers use these um, computer systems to design it, but they, they work in teams and it's really complicated, but you do learn about this in college, like uh, Waterford Institute of Technology. And then when you go to work, you end up working in teams with more experienced engineers so uh, so you become more and more experienced and a better engineer. Now this uh, software at the moment, this is just checking for clashes in the design. Uh, are two different pieces going to uh, interfere with each other? So this is really complicated, but it all starts with understanding the materials and understanding strengths and forces. So we're going to do a few activities now. Uh, they won't need computers to understand. We're going to learn ourselves more about how structures work. So we've uh, seen some bridges there, some very impressive bridges, but uh, let's look at uh, making a bridge. Now the challenge here is to make a bridge with a single sheet of paper that's going to be strong enough to carry weight. Now I'm going to use this as these are the sides of my river. If you don't have books, uh, suitable books, you could use boxes or whatever you can find. And the river should be the width of an A4 sheet of paper. And then we're going to build our bridge using a sheet of paper like that across it. And we see how much it can hold. Now a bridge like this, just like this, how strong do you think it'll be? Do you think it'll hold much? It won't even hold its own weight. So uh, we have to do something with the paper uh, to make it stronger. What could we do? Well, maybe we could fold it over. Okay, it should be stronger this way, shouldn't it? Okay, well, it's holding its own weight anyway. What about our sellotape? Would it hold that? No, no. Okay, well, we need to do something more with it. And to, uh, to think of what we might do, remember back to what I showed you with the ruler. So the ruler is not very strong when we bend it like that, when we lay it flat. But if we turn it up, it's very strong. It's very strong. Now be careful if you're trying this that you don't actually break your ruler, but it is very strong like that, not very strong like that. So does that give us any clue about our bridge? We need depth. So can we increase the depth in our bridge? Well, let me see. What about this? Now, do you think it's stronger? Well, let's see with the sellotape. Seems to hold the sellotape easy enough. And um, when I try the scissors on it, oh, that's a bit much for it. Maybe there's other ways we could make it stronger. Can you think of any? Well, if you want to go and practice and try out different systems, so, you know, we're going to be thinking like engineers, we're going to try different things. We're going to test them then, and we're going to see what's working well. So uh, maybe if we made an extra ridge in it, would that help? Now, of course, that makes it harder for me to put, the, uh, put our weights on it. So I might get something that uh, will hold our weights so we can test this bridge better. So I found this uh, piece of plastic. It's a, it's a cover of a, a food container. And I'm going to use this 
uh, to help hold my weights. And the weights that I found around the house are 20 cent pieces. So you could have use coins or you might find something else to use instead. So I'm going to try and see, can I uh, make this bridge stronger? I just put more folds in. See, does that help? And let's see how strong my bridge is. So I'm going to put this on and I put the uh, coins on this. How many do you think it'll hold? Well, let's see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, it's starting to up, oh, well it held 18 coins for a while, um, so are you surprised at that? We took a piece of paper that wouldn't even hold its own weight and by folding it in certain ways we made it stronger. So that the lesson here is that it's not just about the material, how strong the material is, but it's how we use it. So certain materials might seem to be weak, but if we use them very cleverly, we can get them to uh, do good work for us in our buildings. So you have a go at that again, uh, experiment, try and uh, improve your design and see if you can improve the amount of weight it holds. So I was 18 um, 20 cents pieces. I wonder how you could do. I bet you could do much better uh, if you tried. Now, did you enjoy the bridge challenge? I hope you did. Now we're going to do another challenge. Uh, and uh, firstly, we're going to look a little bit about how uh, we put things together to make them strong. So uh, this is cocktail sticks and uh, jelly sweets and I'm going to just use them. Now you don't have to use these if you have them around the house. Maybe that's a bit of fun. Be very careful though. These are very sharp and uh, don't stick them into your fingers and also don't use them if there's young children around you. Okay, so ask an adult. Uh, for advice on that. Now here is a square and it's held together by our jelly sweets and uh, we look at how strong is a square. So a lot of people <clears throat> building, uh, when you go to build things, you might build them in squares or indeed cubes. Here's one here. I have this is a tower and it's based on cubes. Okay, we'll leave that aside for the minute and we concentrate on our square. So how strong is a square? Well, if we push on the square, look what happens. We put a little bit of pressure on it and it starts bending. Look, that's not really good for a building, is it? If you were on top of this building here and it started Maybe you walked over this side and your weight started making the building bend. That's not really good. In fact, look, it's twisting around. That's not really good. Is it not really strong? So how do we make our building strong? How do we make these pieces work together better? Well, let's look at another shape that you should know. Very simple shape, simpler than a square. Triangle. Triangle is a very important shape if you're building. Okay, because when we push in a triangle, the force goes down here and down here, and the triangle keeps its shape more. Okay, now the jellies don't really hold them together that strongly, so it's not going to be as strong as it might be, but you see, it's much stronger than the square. 
Okay, so if we had shape like this, how would we make it stronger? How could we make it stronger? How could we use the knowledge about triangles to make this stronger? Okay, well, I might just show you with one. We'll take one square, sorry, one cube. And one way to make it stronger would be to be able to use triangles. So I'm just doing this to demonstrate. Uh, this is just to show you. Again, this is, these are sharp. Yeah. This back together like this. Okay, and now I'm going to put this across here, and this one across here. And all of a sudden, we have triangles introduced. And if I did that at each side, this would become very strong. So let's look at it. Will it hold this money? No, look at it, it's bending and it's going to collapse. So let's see what will happen if I put in more triangles and I just skip forward. Okay, so I've just quickly made triangles here in each, uh, on each side and it already seems a good bit stronger. Now let me put our coins on it again. Do you remember when we put them on when it was just a cube, the whole thing just started bending and collapsing. And now look how strong it is because of the triangles. Okay, and have a look at buildings. Um, have a look at big buildings and see can you spot triangles in them. If you think about it, the Eiffel Tower, you can think of the triangles there, can't you? Because we can see the structure there. In a lot of buildings, the structure is hidden away behind concrete and glass, but you might be able to see the triangles uh, in uh, many buildings. Okay, so I'm not expecting you to use these. Uh, we could use straws, that's another thing we can use. And we use straws with marshmallows. Okay, so we can put straws into marshmallows and make shapes out of them. And let's see here, we make a triangle. Here's a triangle out of marshmallows. So you can see. If you had lots of straws and marshmallows, you can grow uh, something really big if you wanted to. Okay, now uh, you can also use lots of other things. Skewers, okay, they're like cocktail sticks but longer. But remember also, they're very sharp, so you need to be very careful with those. Again, you need to have adult supervision. So, um, but another thing people like to use is spaghetti. Now spaghetti is another challenge because sp spaghetti cracks. Obviously raw spaghetti, not cooked spaghetti. Um, so uh, the only thing is about that is it creates a lot of mess. You can get a lot of bits of spaghetti around the place, but you might like to try that as well. So using straws, we can build big, but uh, what we're actually going to use today is paper because so everyone can get paper and how do we make paper strong well we found that if we made it like the like this strong now our challenge now is to build a tower so if we just make one piece of paper like that we can call that a tower but we want to do better so let's uh, look at what we can do with our paper we can roll it up <clears throat> and we can take some sellotape
tape it at the top. Tape it at the bottom. And now with a tube. Okay, a tube like the straws we were using. Okay, but with this tube, we don't need to use uh, uh, marshmallows to put them together. Now, another thing we have to think about is so tubes are strong. See, I might be able to balance this on them on the tube, but mm, yes. Look, look how strong a tube is. So a tube is a, sh uh, a shape we can make paper into to make it much stronger. Now you have to decide how narrow or how tight or loose the tube should be. Uh, might be easier if you wrap the tube around maybe a pen or something. If you wanted it tight, um, now I'm just going to fast forward a bit here. Okay, so I have uh, made three tubes of paper, and I'm going to just stick them together. And we can stick them together with cello tape. flattening the ends of them as I do and here we are here I'm going to finish now it's very useful uh, working this way that you, if you have somebody to help you so working in teams and real engineers always work in teams uh, so, uh, if somebody holds it and somebody cuts the sellotape and somebody tapes it, uh, that's going to make it much easier. So look, there's a triangle made from pieces of paper just rolled up and now there's quite a bit of strength in it. And you should be able to take those pieces of paper and build up and build a tower. Now our next challenge is going to be to build a tower. Now towers of course are tall buildings. And we've had towers in Ireland for a long time. This is one in Glendalough. It's 30 metres high and it's a thousand years old. In Waterford, we have Reginald's Tower, which is 750 years old. And if we come forward 750 years, we have Capital Dock in Dublin, and that's Ireland's tallest building. Well, at least in the Republic of Ireland, in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, there's two buildings taller than that. The tallest structure uh, it's not really a building, is the spire in Dublin at 120 metres, but that's dwarfed by the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which is almost a kilometre high. And, uh, but it's, these are all built with steel mainly, steel and uh, some concrete. And uh, it's possible to build high rise with wood. This is in Norway, and this building is actually taller than the, uh, <coughs> Capital Dock in Dublin. It's about 85 metres tall. So we can use all sorts of materials if we know how to use them right. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to show you some other towers that I made with um, straws and cocktail sticks and skewers. So here's something I made with uh, straws and marshmallows. And uh, it's, a, it's a tower. Um, but how how strong is it? Well, it's not bad, but look, it has a weakness. Look, it's starting to twist and then it'll soon collapse. So it's not that strong. It certainly wouldn't hold our, uh, our weight. <clears throat> so what is it missing here? What's, what's the weakness? It's these squares, isn't it? Look, they're twisting and uh, changing shape. So we can use straws. Now, a straw is not going to stretch across there. So you can do a simple trick of uh, cutting off part of another straw and pushing it inside. And now it's long enough to go across here. So we'll 
just uh, use it like that. Add two more here. Get them in there. And I have one here. Get in like that. Okay, now, now it's much stronger. Okay, and uh, now it's not going to hold a huge weight because these marshmallows are a bit soft, but uh, that's an example of building a tower with uh, straws. I wonder how, how high you could go up uh, using that and using marshmallows. Now I'm going to look at something else. Um, oh yeah, I have another one here that I've done earlier. So um, we saw our using straws and marshmallows, that's good fun. And we saw earlier our toothpicks and uh, jelly sweets and uh, we put in triangles there to make it strong. Now the skewers of course they're just like the um, the cocktail sticks but much longer uh, so obviously you can create something that's a bit higher and here see this one I've made my triangles by joining together a cocktail stick and a skewer to make these long diagonals and that is not it's not bad <clears throat> but I think the best the most fun way really I find and the best way is to do it with paper and um, because uh, you should have lots of used paper around the house to use and see how high you can build with paper now I'm going to show you some pictures of ones that we have had people do uh, back in our Calmast uh, workshop. Here's some pictures of different groups building towers and they're using posters, old posters. You can use your A4 pages, you can use rolled up newspapers, uh, whatever you have to hand and of course use your imagination and creativity. And here are some girl guides and they're building flagpoles so you can build what you like with what materials you have to hand. So the important thing is use your imagination, use your creativity and have fun doing the engineering challenges. Hopefully in the future many of you can come and visit us in Waterford Institute of Technology. It's been lovely meeting you online but uh, hopefully next year when all the restrictions are over you'll be able to come in to Waterford Institute of Technology and visit us in Calmas and do some of our workshops. We do bring in about 20,000 people a year to all our events, but we hold the events around the Southeast region as well. So we might see you out and about there uh, near our home. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, workshop and I hope you enjoyed thinking and working like an engineer and hopefully when you uh, look at buildings, you'll think a bit differently about them and think of what work they're doing and how they're doing it. And maybe you will grow up to be an engineer that maybe will build the new longest bridge in Ireland or the new tallest building in Ireland or the world. So in the meantime, until we meet again, stay safe.